A couple of years ago, some guys from Hopkins looked to see, does your typical doctor know about diabetes testing and management? Guess what? Three quarters of primary care doctors, family practitioners, internists, cardiologists, didn't know how to diagnose prediabetes, let alone manage it. So this is a three-part series which tells you exactly what you need to know about diabetes testing and diagnosis. Take a look. We had a patient a few weeks ago that said that I got so frustrated with my doctor and she didn't have full-blown diabetes, but she had a very significant prediabetes. And she said her A1C was in the very low fives. And she said, because my doctor didn't give me the OGTT or the insulin response test, he said, look at your hemoglobin A1C. It's fine. It's really, really good. And she kept saying, but I don't eat any carbs. And it's like the doctor could not connect the dots that A1C was going to be low if you're not eating any carbs. That's correct. And that happens all the time. It happens all the time. But the other thing that happens even more is somebody comes in with a fasting glucose of 90 and the doc's been telling them from day one, you're great. No problem at all. And sure enough, they've got a full-blown diabetes five to seven years, I think is the average. So you're having somebody with normal fasting blood glucose and three, four years that starts to pick up and rise and rise and rise. And they tell them, I like the way you said, a touch of sugar, yeah. 110 and 115. And then it's 126. Oh, you have diabetes now. You had insulin resistant for eight years before that. And they didn't do anything. And you were not able to do anything about that. And we did have a patient yesterday, if you remember, a patient that was on low carb diet, but she had high levels of LDL. And the response from the physician was, well, you should start eating carbs. It's like, well, definitely different schools of teaching methods and perspectives on the same week. So a little bit more detail for those that didn't connect the dots. So this was a lean mass hyper responder that we saw yesterday. She knew enough about this space to have a strong suspicion that she was. She had no other family members with significant high levels of LDL. She'd had uh, levels of the 120s, 130s. But then once she went low carb, her LDL went up in the 190s. And she was talking about it with her primary care doctor and the primary care doctor said, well, just start eating carbs again, get that LDL back down. So she was not happy. Well, going back to the topic, and I'm sorry, I, I went into that side, but it's part of the process on how most doctors do don't know how to diagnose insulin resistance and diabetes or prediabetes and let alone manage that. If you see here, the Kraft insulin patterns, this is the types of response that are on the book from Dr. Kraft. So pattern one is normal, fasting glucose below 30, peak at 30 minutes to one hour, and two to five hours less than six. Now, if you have this, this doesn't mean that you don't have or you didn't have diabetes in the past. If you're managing stuff, you're likely to have a pattern like this. This is the normal one or the optimal one, let's say. Pattern two, hyperinsulinemia or insulin resistant. Fasting insulin below 30, as we mentioned, a lot of people might be on normal fasting insulin levels, peaking in 30 minutes at one hour, but after two to five hours, it stays above 60. This is the, the ranges that uh, Dr. Kraft describes in the book. Pattern three, you will see the progression in here. Pattern three, fasting insulin is still normal, but now we have a delayed peak. It's not happening at the 30 at one hour. It's happening, the peak is happening at the two and three hour. And you have a delayed return to fasting range. So what's happening here, your insulin level is rising slowly. So meaning between the 30 minute and two hours, you're still having really high levels of blood glucose and your insulin is not kicking in when it should be supposed to. And pattern four, now in pattern four, you see high levels of fasting. So see how you should be driving from pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, until on pattern four, you will see affected fasting insulin level. A delayed peak and a delayed return to fasting ranges after that. So that's the description of insulin resistance, basically. Insulin that is being raised lately and is not efficient enough. And it stays high because it needs to work harder. And pattern five, all values, fasting, 30 minutes, one hour, two hour, five hours, or in the range of zero to 30. That means a low insulin response. And the glucose values matter because that's the interpretation that you're going to have. If the glucose levels are normal or the glucose levels are high. And I added this one. I don't think Dr. Kraft put this on the book. We put this. Consider the lab attack error. On this case, it's on pattern five. We are adding here the optimal OGTT values, but see here, this is not the values that the guidelines use for diagnosis of diabetes. These ones are the optimal OGTT values that we 
proposed. Correct me if I'm wrong, Doc, on this one. So what I'm going to ask, uh, I didn't have when we were reviewing these this morning. What I'd like to do is go back and do the full pattern where we have the insulin value and the glucose value. Now, let's go ahead and add that because it's a very, very helpful, insightful, underlying thing to be able to see what the insulin is doing. So, for example, you get that loss of the first phase of insulin. Well, instead of starting to come back down, the glucose values just keep going up. And that's a very, very helpful visual. And I'd like to do that. If we're able to do it next week, that'd be good. Sure. No problem. To continue to go a little bit deeper into this subject. Again, this is so core to what we do. It's very helpful to start having uh, folks understand a little bit more about what's going on. Yeah. And just a quick comment on the OGTT for glucose values. Usually for diagnosis of diabetes, you should have 200 or more anytime or 140 after two hours. That's what the guideline says. 140 or more after two hours or 200 at any time. Because if you have less than that, if you have 140 one hour, 180 at one hour, you are being resistant already. Maybe you don't have full-blown blood diabetes, but definitely you have insulin resistance. 